Are you wearing shorts? Yeah, of course. The women out there want to see your thighs and calves. Adam, every time we have you in the Freak Nation, it seems like I'm giving you a lot of grief about being from Houston. You claim you're a Houstonian at this point. Bro, do you really want to claim that at this point, that you're a Houstonian, buddy? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's something something to be proud of. Uh, I, Like I said, I've been living here for three years now, and I really feel at home. So me and my wife, we we made ourselves, I mean, like we, we, said, we said this before, like when we came back this year and when I signed a new contract here, it's like now we're basically Houstonian. So that's something I'm very proud of. That's a but good you point. Know, you're saying that to the guy over there. Let's see if I can get this right. Over there, who's from Dallas, couldn't stand Houston growing up. I mean, come on, Kenny. You can kind of like Houston now, right? You know what, uh, Adam? I'll give you that. Just the fact that you're our guest, Adam, I won't crack on you as much about being from Houston. Deal? No. Yeah, okay. Appreciate that. <laughs> Hey, I think the last time we had you on the Dynamo, were, you were doing nothing but looking up at the standings and now sitting in the top five. I know it's early on in the season. What's changed between now and the last time we had you on? Granted, we've had COVID-19. We've had everything else in between. What's changed with the team since then? I think, uh, obviously, we got a new, a few players, like new players in with a new perspective and just new motivation kind of uh i mean bringing a little bit more energy into the group and like they have done a really good job coming in with new a new type of mentality and 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 really just wanting to get this team back to where it belongs and, and also we kept a few of the the players uh that I mean, really did a good job job last year and i think we we are improving all the time and also being uh with the same coach as last year like tab and the coaching staff has done a really good job so just to get more time together and, and some new acquisitions this offseason has really made us uh, stronger and, and we're looking to be to improve even more and, and keep this run going. You talk about acquisitions in the offseason. I mean, what a whack year 2020 was anyway. Is it just that so many people, just their lives were on hold? So soccer was on hold. Everything was on hold. It was just you weren't playing with 100% gumption anyway. Is it just that it's new life that breathes new life into your team? Like you were just saying, it's they're bringing a new energy, but it's just having something new after last year being so weird is great anyway. Yeah, exactly. I can't agree with you more. Like now – last year was not ideal like we got a new like for example we we got a new coach in tab and then new coaching staff and and to have that as the first season is pretty hard and i think we were one of the teams that was struggling really like really bad with with the whole situation surrounding like you know outside of football and just being able to to perform alongside what what was happening outside was really tough for us and i think this year going back to being kind of a normal uh, like back to normal kind of I mean we're heading there so I feel like we, we like you say it, it's just just a good feeling start kind of a starting fresh you know starting on zero and just continue from there and and start growing so I mean I, I totally agree with you and there's no arguing the passion that tab has for you guys I mean if we're going to talk about that red card the other day right I mean you got his back <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah for sure for sure like I think he did a really good job like He's always supporting us and he wants us to do our best. And also you can see that he's always, he's very animated on the sidelines. We kind of joke about it a lot in the team because he's, he's very passionate about the game. I think it's because he was a player himself. So he, he's very involved, even though he's not playing. So we kind of make fun of him for that. But you can see it <laughs> like yesterday, he, he gets very into the game and, and very emotional. And I mean, if we can use that as some kind of uh, adrenaline and like we did yesterday, I felt like it was giving us a last little push the last five minutes to see the game out, which was really important. And, and you know, it's also, he's always, he got our back, like he got our back every situation of the game and against the referees, against other coaches, against everyone. So, I mean, it's, it's a good thing. Hey, Adam, is it true that the younger generation, the millennials like yourself, enjoy when your coach goes bonkers grabs a red card because when i was playing soccer back in the day when we couldn't even afford a soccer ball here we go again uh and i oh, and our, yeah. okay listen and, I, and our coach would would get kicked out of the game was like bro what are you doing i mean you get to hit the kegs early we, did, we didn't like it do you like it when your coach gets booted 
I mean, <laughs> maybe not like if it was something uh, like, of course, you don't like it if it was something stupid, but it was kind of like you saw you saw it was a very tight game yesterday. It was down to the to the last couple of minutes and we were fighting to hang in there. And then we got a bad call. I think it was a clear foul. And you can see that his emotions is that he wants to, you know, he wants he wants to make like fight for us the same way we fight for him so it was kind of that feeling i think he also brought like the crowd into it i don't know if it was on purpose or not but he really got the crowd going and it kind of gave us that extra little adrenaline to finish the game out strong so i don't mind if he if he acts like that in order to protect us if we do something good i mean that's that's good i see that as a good thing we're talking to adam lundquist here from the houston dynamo here uh with the freaks kenny and crash and and adam for those in the Free Nation that don't know, you, of course, are from Sweden. And when I think of Sweden, there are two things I think of. Uh -oh. One, one <laughs> of course, is uh, I think of Trey Kornor, I believe, the, the three crowns of the Swedish national hockey team. Because if you can't tell, I'm a big hockey fan. So that's the yeah. first thing I think of. And the second thing I think of is Ikea. So my roommate was building... My roommate was building a brand new piece of Ikea furniture last night. It took her like four hours to do. So as a Swede, be honest with me, how much Ikea furniture do you own currently? I was about to tell you, my whole apartment is Ikea. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's true. Like, I'm not even exaggerating. We, we went straight, like me and my wife, when we moved here, we went straight. We Googled the first, like, the first Ikea. And we just went there and bought everything, like a couch, like, I don't know, kitchen table, beds, everything. And I don't know, it just comes natural, I guess. It's a little piece of home. <laughs> does it? Does building those types of furniture come easier to Swedes than it does most of us Americans? No, 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 no. It's no. <laughs> just I'm, terrible. <laughs> I'm terrible at building those stuff, but I always, I always kind of, I don't know. I want to do it myself. I never let my wife help me and I suck at it. So it's kind of funny, but <laughs> I'm just, I don't know. I have no patience. So it's, trust me, it's been a lot of uh, hard uh, working hours fixing these furnitures. <laughs> so wait a minute. You have no patience, but you're a defender. I mean, that's patience is your game sometimes. I know, I know, I know. I have patience on the football field or soccer field, but not like when it comes to building furniture. There's zero patience. <laughs> what about in the kitchen? Who does who does all the work in the kitchen, or who takes the trash out? I mean, who's the handiest of you and your wife around the house? Uh, I think, like to be honest, I she does most of the cooking. She is an, she is an amazing cook. Like she makes so good food. I, I'm not even allowed in the kitchen sometimes because I just make <laughs> things worse. But I'm the guy who just walk. I do the dishes. I do most of the laundry and I try to help out with like all the other stuff in order to make it equal, you know, but uh, no, she makes, she does all the cooking for sure. He does the laundry ladies. I do. I do. I do kind of enjoy it. Actually. I just, I just, I mean, when I do it, I just listen to a podcast or something and I fix everything. It's kind of, kind of nice. <laughs> well, hold on, uh, Richie. I want to touch on what, what you asked him about that, about Ikea. Do you know who actually, writes or designs the directions on how to put that crap together, Roham? That, that, that's a tough call. I, I have no idea. Do I, Swedes I, do it? Do the Swedes do it? I don't know. Like someone, I don't know. It, it, it's someone, I think, I always think that it's piece is missing or that there's something wrong with the instructions. So I, I can't tell you. I can't tell you. <laughs> Good. So it's not just us. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. That is greatness. Uh, it is a it is a young season, so there's not a whole lot to talk about uh, other than we, we talk to many athletes, whether they're motorsports stars or football or basketball. And it's this time last year, it was such a, an epic fail for not just this country, but the world in regards to COVID. Where do you think not you or the Dynamo, but MLS is at this point uh, from a percentage wise about getting back to normal? Granted, having fans in the stands will be normal. But what about a psyche and that COVID is in your rear view mirror? Uh, where, where is Major League Soccer as far as getting back to normal, Adam? Ooh, um, that's a tough question. I think I, I would say like just to give you like kind of a number, maybe, I don't know, but maybe like 50% back. It feels like, oh. I feel like we're coming. I mean, it's, 
faster and faster. I think in the summer it will go even up to 75% because now we're back with like normal training routines. Um, we still have some kind of protocols we have to follow due to COVID. But, you know, game days, traveling, all that type of stuff. Also, the schedule is pretty much normal now. Yet last year was kind of a mess. So everything kind of is getting back to, to normal. But mm-hmm. I, I won't say that we're there yet. There's some pieces still missing. But, I mean, now with all the vaccinations going on in this country and how fast that is going, I mean, I could see in the summer easily it could be back to 75 and then in the fall maybe 100%. Hmm. Awesome. You think about that, how Major League Soccer was frankly a, a business model for other sports leagues on how to handle uh, getting things somewhat back to normal on the field in and of itself. It's something that I don't think is lost on guys inside that MLS figurative bubble, but I don't know if the NFL or NBA or, or other leagues understand the importance of what you guys did and solved in Orlando last year. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, it was a big sacrifice for all of us, like being away from families and, and, and all that stuff. But I think we, we wanted to, I, I don't know. It was kind of, we needed it as much as I think the the people around, like what, liking soccer, you know, watching soccer and people just in general needed something to kind of give them hope that it was, uh, there was so, like, I don't know, like we saw an end to this and there was actually a, a way to figure out how to compete and watch sports. I think we saw that as a great opportunity for us to kind of be the first league uh, in this country to 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 play and, and do that stuff and get the publicity of that. But I think most of all, it was just for ourselves and for maybe all the fans to show that, okay, look, we want to give people some happiness by playing and, and give you guys something to watch because I know lockdown last year was so hard for many of us. And mm-hmm. for us, it was fun to be able to, to give some joy back to like into people's homes again. You know, you brought up how you guys had to sacrifice. You could not be with your families at that time. And I completely forgot about that part, but it did bring you guys as a team closer together. Who did you maybe become most annoyed with on the Houston Dynamo? But who did you maybe become a bigger friend with because of that tightness you guys had last year? Uh, I think we were like, as a group, obviously we became very close. Like we were together for three and a half weeks, like just, every day all day so but i would say i was living right next to marco maric uh the goalkeeper and uh, he like i said he was kind of we got closer as friends during that time but also like he was the guy that made me most annoying because we were very much (laughs) we were very different like he's very messy and and i want everything very like clean and and like in order and he's all over the place so living like we were always you know like i don't know walking together to lunch and all that stuff and he was always late he was always scrambling <laughs> looking for stuff. and I was, I was waiting for him so it was kind of fun but uh i would say marco yeah for sure it kind of brought you back to club days or school soccer days back way back in the day huh <laughs> yeah for sure like it felt like we were kids like living in dorm rooms basically right. with like just playing fifa all day trying to kill time because we weren't allowed we weren't allowed to go outside so we had not or we were like within the hotel but there was nothing to do and orlando in the summer is miserable it's like go out in, in houston when it's 120 yes. degrees and humidity so we just stayed inside played video games together all the time <laughs> I got one more here uh, for me, Adam. I mentioned the Swedish national hockey team earlier, and I was looking at your I was looking at your Wikipedia page earlier, as we do in radio. We always go to Wikipedia pages and find All facts wiki, baby. that we can yeah. ask about. And there was one <laughs> sentence in there that said that you played hockey as a kid. Is that true? Yes, it is. Like like you said, hockey is probably the main, still the main sport I would say in Sweden. It's uh, so I played until I was. I think it was 11, 12 when I stopped. I had to pick because I think hockey, they started very early to go to like three or four sessions a week. 
and I was also doing soccer. So it was kind of, I had to choose. And my dad told me, and my dad pretty much told me straight up. He's like, look, you're much better at soccer than hockey. So I would choose soccer. <laughs> so I was like, oh, thank you. No, I don't. so that's kind of how it, go, how it went. But I, I love hockey too. I mean, grew up playing it, uh, watching it. My dad was a hockey player. So he kind of likes watching hockey more than soccer. So that's kind of, oh. kind of fun. But, Do you have uh, a favorite NHL team? Uh, I would say no, really. Like, I, I grew up, uh, when I grew up, Peter Forsberg was the main man. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I've i been, like, I was always looking at Colorado Avalanche when he was playing there. Uh, but then also uh, Matt Sandin in Toronto Maple Leafs was, like, the two big guys we were watching. So I would say either uh, one of those two teams for sure. You can't say freaking Dallas Stars, can you? Because you're taking it out. You can't say the Stars. They're just up the street, bro. I I just, I mean, Dallas, I remember I was playing NHL like on PlayStation. They had Mike Modano. I remember that guy. Oh, oh no. A pure legend. I remember him. <laughs> Mike Modano. <laughs> hey, uh, Adam, you see what's over my shoulder over here? Can you see what the, what the hell this is right there? Well, your big melon's in the way. You see okay, what that is? Go. The the shirt, yeah 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 man. What, that, what one? Is that? that one, yeah. yeah. That's a de- that's a decent player you got there. Well, yeah, you have to. Kind of a good guy. Yeah, kind of a kind good of, player. Yeah, Just listen. Kind of good. Here's my point. Can you get some more damn decor in this room where you are, bro? It's nothing but a white wall. Why can't you fill your room with madness, I actually, bro? Actually, I I have to tell you, I just moved in like a month, <laughs> month ago, so I I don't have I didn't have time. Look. I'll be honest with you. I would love to put some stuff up here, but I haven't yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, that lamp that creeps in every now and then is pretty cool. I know, cool. I know. Pretty... I'm trying to yeah. get it off. But there you go. Hard, right? I... <laughs> I saw it. I, I noticed it too late. I was like, I had it a whole interview just like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's Ikea. That's Ikea. Right. Bam! Oh, yeah. <laughs> For sure. Are you, wearing, are you wearing shorts? Yeah, of course. All right, the women out there want to see your thighs and calves. Put your th- oh. come on. <laughs> no, Listen, they're come nothing on. to see. They're nothing to oh, see. What? For sure. No, dude, you're a badass. Very, no, very skinny, very skinny. To what? Be, to be honest, you should see Go. the guy in our team, Tim Parker. He looks like a linebacker. <laughs> they, should, they should ask him. <laughs> well then go to him. ikea and get some thick legs to put together will yeah you? i know i need to walk the stairs in ikea up and oh <laughs> lordy <laughs> Dude, this has been awesome. Let's uh, let, let's do it again sometime in the season. It's always greatness yes. to get you in here, all right, bud? Yeah, for sure. It's always fun.